I'm a lifetime Protestant, and I was wondering, to my ears, the Catholic Church has a pretty strong or extreme emphasis on Mary. And I was wondering where that came from. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate the question. So, uh, several places. Uh, first of all, uh, it comes from Sacred Scripture. In the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the Blessed Virgin herself, after the angel's annunciation, prophesies, uh, all generations will call me blessed. All generations will call me blessed. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, St. John has a vision, a heavenly vision, of a woman who's clothed with the sun, moon, and stars. Uh, I mean, these are symbols of heavenly glory. And she is described as uh, the mother of the child who will rule the nations with a rod of iron. And that's a reference to Psalm 2. It's a messianic psalm. So we know that she's the mother of the Messiah. And she's also described as the mother of all of those uh, who believe in Jesus. So simultaneously, the mother of the God-man and the mother of the church. We also look to passages like John chapter 2 and John chapter 19, where Christ uses a very particular title for his mother. He, he speaks to her as the woman, the woman. And when in Genesis chapter 3, we read the first proclamation of the gospel when the Lord tells Adam and Eve and the serpent that the seed of the woman will crush, crush the head of the serpent. And that seed, of course, is the Messiah, and the woman, of course, is his mother. And if the association were not clear enough, when you look back at Revelation chapter 12, again, this woman who is clothed with the Son, who is the mother of all Christians, is also described as in confrontation with that ancient serpent, the devil. So that association between Mary as the second Eve and the proclamation to the first Eve, her own prophecy that all generations will call her blessed, her identity as the mother of the God-man, the mother of God, uh, all of these justify our recognition that Mary plays a unique role in the history of redemption. When the angel Gabriel came to her and gave her the annunciation concerning her son, her response was, be it done to me according to thy word. That's the proper disposition of every Christian, right? God says, we're going to do it this way, and we go, I'm on board. Yep, God, you do it like you want it. You're God. I'm, I'm with you. I, I yield my will and my life to you. But in, in most cases, when I do that, it doesn't bring about the salvation of the human race. It might have an effect on my own salvation or the salvation of my family, but Mary's yes was the instrument of bringing about the incarnation of the Son of God. So it was, a, it was far more fruitful. Her maternity is not only the, the physical maternity of the, her child, the God-man, but it was a spiritual uh, fecundity that brought about the salvation of the human race, right? If she, what if she'd said no? Uh, thanks, but no thanks. You know, I, I, I think I'll go watch Netflix instead. No, but she said yes to God, and her yes was was eminently powerful. Now, that's, that's kind of step one in my answer to you. Uh, a few more steps in the picture. There's also a biblical teaching that applies not only to Mary, but to all the saints, all the saints. We read this in passages like Revelation chapter 5, and Revelation chapter 8. And that teaching is that the saints in glory, the saints in heaven, those that have already run the race and fought the good fight and gone on to receive their reward, that they pray for us. They pray for the church on earth. And not only do they pray for us, but they offer our prayers to God. Now, if you don't believe me, I'll tell you, go look at Revelation 5, 8, 5 verse 8. They are offering our prayers for God. They, we, we, it, we're engaged with them in an intercessory capacity. And St. James, in chapter 5 of his epistle, says that the prayer of a righteous person avails much. It's very powerful. So not all prayers are equal. The unrighteous guy, he, his prayers may work, but they're not as effective as the prayer of the righteous. That's what Scripture says. Okay. Well, the most, the most effective prayers of the most righteous people. That's why the saints in heaven are so powerful in their intercession. But among those saints in heaven that are praying for us, is, is, is there any? Is there any saint in heaven that can compare in glory to the woman clothed with the sun, moon, and stars who gave birth to the God-man? Can any boast a, a, a more imminent accomplishment than to have brought Christ into the world? I think not. 
hence again, her most potent intercession on our behalf. And so Catholics are, are eminently justified. We ask for all the saints to pray for us. We glory in all of the saints and their accomplishments. But, but none, none takes precedence, none takes preeminence over the, the, the ever-glorious and ever-virgin Blessed Mother.